Hey everybody, Trevor here for Triple T Archery and Triple T Strings. Today, uh, my goal is to help you understand what the proper length string is for your single string bow. Okay, let's get started. So, uh, almost every single string bow on the market today follows the AMO standard for marking their bow lengths. Okay, so if you have an ILF, your limbs are going to be marked short, medium, long. And then, of course, XL, that kind of stuff. Uh, your riser will be marked at a particular length. Um, if you have wood bows, one or two or even three piece, uh, those will be marked with an AMO length printed on the bow most of the time. Uh, obviously, um, there will be some variation to this and some bows won't be labeled and some, maybe some older bows, the markings have rubbed off. But in general, if you're buying a bow today, it's going to be marked with an AMO bow length. Well, what does that mean for figuring out what the length of the string needs to be for your bow? So, again, most bows will follow this standard fairly closely. Okay, so what is the standard? The AMO standard says that the bow should be marked three inches longer than the optimum string length. So if you have a 66 inch AMO, it should take a 63 inch string, okay? Now, here's the important part. Based on a non-stretchable master string standard. What does that mean? So that basically means the string being three inches shorter uh, basically needs to have no elasticity to it. Well, all string material has elasticity. Some of it more, some of it less, and we argue a lot about that. What's the correct elasticity for different types of bows, especially uh, some of these super curves that are on the market today. And the reality is that your string builder is, is simply going to have to know how to adjust for the elasticity in his recipe. And what do I mean by recipe? That's material selection, the amount of the material that he uses, so the number of strands in the string, and the style in which he makes the string. So it could be uh, he or she. It could be endless, like this string, with served loop ends. It could be Flemish, like this string, with uh, Flemish twist weaved loop ends. Um, all of that affects the elasticity of the string. So if we just lay these strings out on the table, this one's going to be about a half inch shorter uh, than this one or a quarter inch shorter than this one. And why is that? Well, it's the same material. It's the same amount of strands. This one, because of the type, just has a different elasticity. It's endless, so it just has a different elasticity than Flemish. So there's no way for you to actually know what length string you need to order from your string maker and and just because i build say a 14 strand d97 does not mean that my 14 strand d97 has the same amount of elasticity as another person's 14 strand d97 so what is what am i trying to say what i'm trying to say is what you need to know as a consumer is that you need to know your bow's amo standard and you need to find a string maker that is familiar with your bow and knows what the length needs to be to fit that bow. Um, there are bows on the market that do not follow this standard, even though they're marked with this standard, such as Hoyt, for example. Hoyt Satori's run at least three quarters of an inch longer than the AMO standard. A 62 inch Satori does not need a 59 inch string. Um, uh, you know, if you measure the string off of the bow, just laying out on the table, uh, it actually needs a string at least three quarters of an inch longer than that to get it to the top of the brace height range, uh, according to Hoyt. So that's just something that your string maker hopefully will know and can make adjustments for you uh, on the fly. So all you need to know as a consumer is the AMO length of your bow, right? Long bows are going to be a little different. Most of those need about a half inch longer than the AMO standard. Um, for example, A&H Archery does not. They run a true AMO standard, but every other long bow I've ever made a string for typically needs almost a half inch longer string. So that's just things for you to put in the back of your mind, but what I'm trying to communicate today is that in order to order the proper length string, you simply just need to know this, and you need 
to uh, leave the mathematics up to your builder because he will convert that AMO standard to his recipe and the elasticity for the string that he builds, okay? Um, so I do want to address one other thing. Well, all the time we're seeing these posts uh, on social media forums such as Facebook, people will ask, hey, how long should my string be for my bow? And uh, a majority of the comments are always four inches shorter, four inches shorter, four inches shorter. Well, uh, isn't that contradictory to what I've just said here, three inches shorter? Well, well, how? Wh what's wrong there? Okay, well, it's back to what I was saying. It's the elasticity. So if I used an older material such as B55 or B50 Dacron, um, if you just laid that out on the table and measured it, it would need to be three, four inches shorter. And why is that? Because when you brace the bow, it's going to stretch an entire inch uh, because there's a ton of elasticity in that material. So that's going to get you back to the AMO standard of three inches longer based on a non-stretchable master string. Um, so that's why I'm saying, you know, you need to talk with your string maker about the material you're going to use that's safe for your bow, in my opinion, that is a non-blended, 100% Dyneema, Spectra, or Dacron material, okay? Um, that, that The choice would be yours. I, I personally prefer the 100% Dyneema uh, if your bow is fast flight compatible. And, um, you know, from there, you guys can talk about strand count, what's what's good, what's safe, um, and, and what's the right length for your bow, okay? So I hope this has helped some people understand how to order a proper string length. You simply just order based off the AMO standard, provide the make and model of your bow to your string maker, and um, hopefully if he has any additional questions, you guys can go from there. Thanks and have a good day.